So I want to I want to take it back to Kent State when you were you were there for two years and you coached Antonio Gates. You were able to coach him in high school. I mean, I know you and right. you and Tone are, uh, you know, super good relationship. So you coached him in high school at Detroit Central, and then you coached him at Kent State. But did you ever see him becoming a Hall of Fame tight end like that? That's <laughs> that you right know, there is crazy. It, it it's amazing because when he was in high school. I remember Antonio was playing football and a lot like myself, we had another kid named Dwight Smith on the team. Both of them were on the team. And I told Dwight and Antonio, I said, I, I, I don't want to say I made a mistake because I wouldn't be standing in front of you guys here today. But my best sport was football. And I believe if I would have put my all in the football, I could have made it to the NFL. I was all city, all state. I just didn't have a love for it. <clears throat> I shared that with Dwight and Antonio. Dwight took the advice right away, played at Central. He went on. Uh, to Akron, and then he was a first round, second round draft choice out of Akron. But he 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 really put basketball to the side. When Antonio, like myself, was in love with foot, I mean basketball. He just wanted to play basketball, and he was dominating in basketball. Obviously, winning the state championship at Central was one thing, but I can remember him on the AAU circuit playing for the Michigan Mur uh, Mustangs, and. At that point, he was playing against like the Tracy McGrady's of the world. And he would go to Vegas and they won the big time and he would dominate all the top players. So in his mind, he felt he wanted to play basketball and go to the NBA. Long story short, through his recruitment, he didn't get recruited at a high level in basketball. He had a few Mac offers, but at the time, Nick Saban, uh, was the football coach at Michigan State. So I remember Nick Saban come to Central with his staff telling us, that if Antonio came to Michigan State and played football after two or three years, he would be a professional football player. He had all the attributes to be a great player. He was athletic, had great hands. He can play offense or defense. I remember one time Antonio in high school scored six touchdowns, four as a receiver, uh, two on the defensive end, intercepted the ball, ran it in for a touchdown, and sacked the quarterback, picked up the ball, and ran it in for a touchdown. So he was highly recruited as a football player on offense and defense, Florida, Florida State, Miami, LSU, Michigan, Michigan Dang. State. He was like unbelievable. He, so he didn't have the grades, right? So he had to go to Michigan State as a prop 48. So he went to Michigan State. We believed in what Nick Saban said. I mean, he was a great football player. So he'd go up there and he still had a love for basketball. So opposed to doing what he's supposed to do basketball-wise, he's hanging out with the team, please. He's trying to figure out how he can walk on the basketball team, right? And I can remember Tom Izzo. We talked to Tom Izzo. He like, man, I would take him, but I gotta, you know, I gotta talk to Nick, Nick Saban, Coach Saban. He called Nick Saban, and whatever Nick Saban said, Coach Izzo shut it down. So no chance he was gonna play basketball at, at Michigan State. So Antonio got frustrated with the situation transfer to Eastern Michigan. He said, you know what? I'm just going to transfer to Eastern Michigan because he was so in love with basketball. Transfer to Eastern Michigan, stay there a year, don't work out, go to junior college, end up graduating and coming to Kent State. I can remember his senior year. Um, he still was talking about he want to play basketball. I'm like Antonio. I remember sitting him down in the office at Kent State and we made a deal. He was going to Portsmouth. I said, Antonio, if you go to Portsmouth and you don't come back as one of the top two players out of this camp, you got to give football a try. He was like, okay, bet. I'll make a deal with you. If that happens, if I'm not the top two players in Portsmouth, I'm going to come back and I'm going to pursue football. He didn't know, but a month prior to that, during the basketball season of his senior year, me and uh, Rob Sinderoff, who was a, another assistant coach at Kent, we got together, put together a letter. We sent it out to 30 NFL teams with his profile, why he had attended Michigan State. And after the season, we felt they should come in and take a look at him in a workout. So that letter went out to all the NFL teams. I made this deal with Antonio. I knew he wasn't gonna come back as one of the top two players in sports. sports <laughs> yeah. right? I already knew that. I knew how good he was, but I know how the, the game is played at Portsmouth. It's a dominated camp by guards, right? That are trying to yeah. make it to the league. So he comes back, not one of the top two players. So I said, Tone, I sat him down. I said, okay, you made this deal. I said, but this is what we did a month ago. I explained to him the letter we sent out and teams start calling. So I was acting as his agent. We set it up, I think six teams came in to see him work out at Kent State. We set it up, 
we went over and talked to the football coaches. They let us use the football indoor practice facility. So six teams came into Kent State to watch him work out on sort of like a pro day. And, and just all off this letter we had sent out. Well, he went in and worked out. He caught the ball for about, when he got one of the uh, Kent State quarterbacks, he caught the, the football for about, I would say 20 to 30 minutes, just running different routes, doing what the, the guys wanted to see him do. And I, I don't forget, after that workout, five teams left, one team stayed. It was a guy named Tim Brewster, who was the, at the time, the tight end, tight ends coach for the San Diego Chargers. And he asked me, did Antonio have an agent? I said, no, I'm kind of running this process. You know, we don't know how this is going to work out, but I think he can, you know, play in the NFL. He said, well, can I take you guys to dinner tonight? So we went to dinner that night in Kent. I said, Antonio, you got to go with me. This tight ends coach want to meet you. So we at the dinner talking. He talking football with Antonio, getting to know him. So after the dinner, Antonio leaves. He said, listen, he understands football. I've seen everything I needed to see today. If you get him to sign with us, the San Diego Chargers, I promise you he'll be a pro bowler in three years. So I'm like, I'm looking like, is this a recruiting <laughs> thing? Like, are you serious? Like, I, you know, some guys get to talking and trying to like, just recruit you. And so I said, uh, no, you got to kind of tell me what that looks like. So he, you know, broke it down with his thoughts were why he could be a great football player. Um, I said, well, you guys should just draft him. Should you got seven rounds, take him in the seventh round. He's like, no, we can't do that because we don't have no film on him. But you got to, you know, take my word. So I said, okay. So he flew back in two weeks later to watch Antonio work out again. That's how serious he was. Draft come, we sit through the draft. And San Diego called, Pittsburgh called, San Francisco 49ers called, the New York Giants called. Antonio wanted to side with Pittsburgh. We in the Kent State office. Tim Brewster called me and said, listen, I guarantee you he's going to be on the practice squad. If you just let him sign with us, and in three years, he's going to be a pro bowler. Don't forget what we talked about. So we looked at the contract. I said, Antonio, you got to guarantee $220,000 for two years if you sign with the Chargers. You're talking about you want to go overseas and play basketball. You're probably going to make seventy five dollars to $100,000 to start. You're going to be in another country. I don't know how you will you know, do over there. You've never really been anywhere by yourself. I want to take this route and just sign with the Chargers to see if it can work out. $440,000 in two years, like you have no money right now, right? right. You <laughs> give it a shot. We yeah. signed a contract from Kent State office. We faxed it back. I still have the same, I still have his contract, the same contract that he signed. I still have That's it. That's legendary. Yeah, yeah. So we sign it. And before you know it, he's a, in, 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 in summer camp, he's busting his butt. I'm calling and keeping in touch with the tight ends coach. He's like, don't tell him, but he's doing a really good job. I want to keep him hungry. So guys were getting cut left and right. I remember Antonio calling me and said, man, my roommate, I woke up and he was gone. Like, am I good? I'm like, no, you ain't good. Like, you might get cut tomorrow. <laughs> you better work your butt off, right? So long story short, he made the team first four games. He's on the practice squad. And then he made it to the uh, special teams teams. Steven Alexander got hurt like six games in, who was a pro bowl tight end. Yeah. Antonio took his job and was a starter for 16 years in the NFL. He was a pro bowler in the second year. So, I mean, he was just a natural football player. He had all the gifts. He was tough, could run, catch, um, had speed, agility, um, really understood the game, like really smart player too, had good size for the position. And he transcended the tight end position. But that's kind of his story. And uh, he went out there and it made 16 years out of it. Now he's going into the Hall of Fame, probably be a first ballot Hall of Fame. Oh, no question, first ballot. He, he was best tight end in the league for most of his career, for real. Yeah, yeah. Well, I say he played 16 years for probably 10 of those years, which is really hard to do. He dominated that position. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, he's, he's good. He was on Dancing with the Stars last night. Uh, I forgot to, <laughs> forgot to watch it. So now he's into... Still works for the Chargers as a brand ambassador and still doing other things as he's continued to grow his different business, but, but really doing well. But it goes back to, and again, I'm all about making an impact, encouraging guys to do what they want to do and follow their dreams, but also try to give them advice and, and what they should do from my vantage point, you know, experience in life and what I can give back. So I'm, I'm sure he's forever thankful, but I'm forever thankful that he listened that we were forward thinking while we were at Kent State and sending that letter 
and the teams coming out to watch him work out. It, it just was a life changer. Um, but as a coach and as a mentor, you're always thinking, especially at that age with the guys you're coaching, what's best for them and what can you do to put them in position to be the best for the rest of their life? That's all I've ever kind of been about when I got into this game, because I know what all the coaches did for me. I talked about it at the beginning of this, this, this uh, show um, and how impactful they were for me. So when I got into coaching and became a mentor, I wanted to have that same impact for young guys that I was touching when I was touching their lives. So I was able to do that for hundreds of guys throughout my career and really proud of that.